Hello and welcome to video two of blood vessels for 2402 lecture. So we'll cover capillaries and veins in this one. Uh, capillaries pick up where arterioles left off and you find them spread throughout your body. Uh, you're going to have them less concentrated in stuff like your tendons and ligaments, but fat, skin, muscle, uh, most connective tissue, uh, nervous tissue is all rich with capillaries. Capillaries are built to exchange stuff with the tissues around them. So if you get food from your digestive system, that blood goes out to a capillary bed in your liver and exchanges nutrients. And then from the liver, it goes out to the rest of your circulatory system and drops off nutrients and oxygen, picks up wastes and moves hormones around, etc. There are three different types or classes of capillary here on the right. <clears throat> uh, Continuous <clears throat> are the most common, and these are found in the majority of your body. There are little clefts between them. A, a cleft is a little space. So stuff can either diffuse straight across the membrane or sneak out through these clefts. And you're gonna have clefts in all these all these capillary bed types. So the next one, the more the next most leaky, or the next more leaky, are called fenestrated. <clears throat> and a fenestra is a hole. So each of these things are these are fenestrae, which is plural. And you can see that they're found where you're going to uh, want to get rid of waste and where you're going to want to absorb nutrients and where you're going to want to get hormones across the, the barrier. So there's a bit more space available for movement of stuff. Now you can move across the membrane through the clefts or through these holes. And lastly, they are called sinusoid capillaries, which have the most gaps in them. You can see these big sinuses or spaces. The basement membrane isn't really complete either. You can see there's some gaps in that basement membrane. Uh, here's where you're going to have to move cells. So lots of cells can move across these, uh, through into these, mem into these capillaries and out of. Uh, you'll see that it's in the marrow where you make blood cells. So you have to get away, you have to have a way to get them into the, to the bloodstream. So they get in through capillary uh, sinusoid capillaries. Notice I say it's a macrophage hunting ground. Well, macrophages can just like hang out on this surface and kind of extend their pseudopodia, their little feet in here, and snag bacteria as they come by. The next slide uh, talks about capillary beds. So this is as opposed to a single capillary, which you don't find most usually. You find lots of them together, right? So here's a little arteriole and what's called a terminal arteriole. Terminal arterial is going to branch into the capillary, so it's a subdivision of an arterial. Capillaries are, and you can see the arterial end at this end and the venous end at this end. That'll be important later when we talk about bulk flow. But for now, let's just look at how the the fluid flows through the capillary beds. Notice how you can either have them completely open or completely shut in some cases. So if you uh, have your uh, it's cold outside and you go out to to uh, do something for a while and it's really cold, you're going to want to cut those capillaries down to your skin. So your skin will get cold on the surface, which conserves heat on the inside. Over here, you'll see what's called a, uh, a meta, meta arterial channel. So this channel right here is a meta arterial, meaning kind of like an arterial going from the uh, artery half of the circulatory system to the vein half. And you can see that there are these, what, what are they called, pre-capillary sphincters. So pre-capillary sphincter, just think that term through, before the capillary, pre-capillary, and a sphincter pinches things off like, right, like sphincters do. So instead of just, like we have over here, allowing the blood to travel through all the capillaries, if you pinch off some of these side alleys, the blood's only going to travel through a reduced number of the capillaries or through this sort of central uh, shunt or, or channel. Uh, this would be a good example if you have not eaten for a while and you uh, don't have any reason to supply your intestines with lots of blood. So you kind of cut those off. Or if you're going to go to uh, exercise, even if you have food in your gut, you're going to cut off the blood flow to the, to the intestines. And this is how you do that. And the last slide for this will cover veins and then call it, call it a screencast. Uh, veins are going to be the return vessels. Uh, there's no real easy way I can think of to, to remember it in English, except for you might want to say arteries away and veins 
you know, are going the opposite direction. But if you know any Spanish, Bien en las Venas is uh, the veins uh, come, they come towards you. So the veins come back to the heart. They have much larger lumens, which means that gap, that, that chamber in the middle, but they are much thinner wall. They don't have nearly as much muscle, real weak, uh, smooth muscle in their tunica media because they have help returning it as you see at the bottom of this page. Veins hold most of your blood, 60% at any one time. So you've got a greater than half of your blood just slowly making its way back to your heart. They start small as venules, just like arteries end small as arterioles. So a venule is a little guy that picks, them up, picks up the blood from the capillary beds. They are porous, which means that fluids can leak in and out, which is good because you're going to have a lot of leakage at the arterial end, and you're going to want to absorb a lot of that at the venous end. Uh, once you get done with being a venule, a little baby vein, where some of them have a, all three tunics and the smaller ones only have the first two, uh, you get to veins, which are uh, the biggest things. And if you have a named vein, you're going to be talking about a proper vein. Like I said, thin tunica media, very low blood pressure. And uh, interestingly, veins have valves. So you see this little flap right here? As blood gets pushed upward, a lot of your veins lie below your heart. So as blood, blood returns to the heart going up, you're going to be able to close those valves to prevent backflow. So just like you had the valves in your heart to prevent backflow into a chamber, here we have valves in a vein to prevent backflow back down the vein. Now here I list three different ways that blood gets returned in the veins. By what's called the muscular pump, and this is skeletal muscle. When you, let's say, stand on your tippy toes, your calf muscle is going to get shorter and fatter, and it's going to squeeze the veins that are around it. So you kind of squoosh it up the tube. In your abdomen and thorax, you have what's called the respiratory pump. Try taking a really deep breath. Go. So what happens is, hopefully you're doing that, what happens is your chest expands and your diaphragm pushes down into your abdomen. If you could see me, it would be better because I'm doing hand motions. Your diaphragm pushes down into your abdomen and kind of squishes all of your intestines and squishes them all into the veins that are returning the blood up through the abdomen. They call that a uh, the respiratory pump. And then a sympathetic venous vasoconstriction. You do have a real thin tunica media, so you do have the ability to vasoconstrict in the veins. It's just kind of, kind of a weak effort. Uh, lastly, you may find that the blood pools in what are called venous sinuses, which are zero pressure, uh, just really thin walled containers of blood that are surrounded by other tissue. Your coronary sinus is surrounded by uh, cardiac muscle. Your dural sinus in your brain is surrounded by uh, connective tissue and brain, so it kind of protects the walls. That is video two.